Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over equivalent dose. So let's get started. Now, in the theory video for absorbed dose, we saw that the equation d equals e over m only took into account the mass of the material or the tissue that is absorbing the radiation, but it didn't actually take into account the type of tissue. And it's also the case that the absorbed dose does not take into account the type of radiation used. And this is pretty important for if you want to determine how dangerous radiation actually is. So some types of radiation are more dangerous than others. Each type of radiation is given a radiation weighting factor, which has the symbol W with a subscript of capital R, to indicate its biological effect, or in other words, its harm, on a material. So in the exam, you get given this on the data sheet, which is a table of the types of radiation and their radiation weighting factors. So this gives you an indication of how damaging each type of radiation is in terms of its factor. So the higher the radiation weighting factor, the more likely that type of radiation is to cause damage to the body. So you'll see alpha radiation has a radiation weighting factor of 20, whereas for beta, you've got one, and for gamma, you've got one as well. And then, for example, fast neutrons, a radiation weighting factor of 10. So in a sense, we could say that based on the type of radiation alone, alpha radiation will be 20 times more damaging than, say, beta or gamma radiation. And this links back to when we looked at the types of radiation, where we saw that alpha radiation was the most damaging when considered inside the body. And this is because it was the most ionizing type of radiation. In other words, we said it packs the biggest punch. There are three factors that the biological effect depends on, and you need to be able to remember these three things. You'll notice that they've come up in multiple choice questions before in exams. So the biological effect depends on the absorbed dose, D, the type of radiation, and the type of tissue or organs exposed. So it will depend on whether you're using alpha radiation or gamma or beta or slow or fast neutrons and so on. And it will also depend on whether it's brain tissue or somebody's hand or leg, which absorbs the radiation. Just like for absorbed dose, we also have an equation for equivalent dose. And again, this gives us an idea of the biological effect or harm that radiation will cause on a material. So we say that equivalent dose is the absorbed dose multiplied by the radiation weighting factor. In other words, we've got this equation on the relationship sheet in the exam. So it's H equals D times WR, where capital H is the equivalent dose measured in sieverts, capital S, small v. Capital D is absorbed dose measured in grays. And WR is the radiation weighting factor, which has no units. We saw in the table that it's just numbers. And we've seen in previous videos, such as when we were talking about film badges, that to protect ourselves, we need to measure and monitor the amount of radiation that we receive especially if you're working with radiation. The health and safety executive in the UK issue the following guidance on equivalent dose exposure. These three numbers, I should point out, are very important for you to remember. So the first one is the average annual background radiation in the UK, and this is roughly 2.2 millisieverts. So this is taking into account all the types of background radiation in the UK, which is going to give an average of 2.2 millisieverts. The annual effective dose limit for a member of the public is 1 millisievert. So let's say you're just an average Joe going about your everyday life, going to school or a job which doesn't involve working with radiation, then your maximum recommended limit is 1 millisievert, and that's over the full year. And lastly, the annual effective dose limit for a radiation worker is 20 times that, so 20 millisieverts instead. So this says that over a year, if you work with radiation, you're allowed to be exposed to 20 times the radiation than a normal member of the public is who doesn't work with radiation. So I should point out that you need to remember these three numbers. So remember they are all in millisieverts, so you've got 2.2, 1, and 20. So the one you'll probably remember the easiest is this 1 millisievert, just because that is you and I, who is a member of the public, who doesn't really work with radiation on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully you can relate to this one because that is where we fit in. And you you could just remember that for a radiation worker it's 20 times that, so 20 millisieverts, and then the odd one out is the 2.2 for the average annual background radiation in the UK. That's all for this video folks, I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.